Hello, my name is Jenny Hernandez, and I'm here to talk to you about finding the distance between two points on Earth. A discussion that we talked about when we were explaining spherical geometry. Now, on the homeworks that we had in class, we were finding the distance between two points if we were on the equator with changes in longitude or along the same longitude with changes of, of latitude. Now the reason we did this was because we used a special formula for arc length, which was the angle, times 360 times the radius. Now, the only reason this works is because it's out of 360 and it only works on great circles. Now a great circle divides a sphere into two into two equal parts called hemispheres. And when it's in the homework that we had, it was a little bit easier. But if we're trying to find the distance between a point not on the equator and a different point, both of which have different latitudes and longitudes, we need to take a different approach. Now the first approach is the Haversine formula. Now this formula has a pretty easy plug and go, and there's a lot of online programs that make it easy to, to find this. Let's take a quick look at that formula. It won't be discussed. So here we have the formula, and it looks a little bit complex. And it simplifies down to this formula on the bottom, where you plug in your latitudes and your longitudes to find the distance between the two points using basic trigonomic functions. What we're going to do today is the second method. So, let's begin. We have a starting point and an ending point. Our starting point is our campus in Victoria, Texas, and our ending point is Kodak headquarters in Rochester, New York. Now here, I've put in, in decimal degrees, the coordinates of both locations. And we're going to take a look at how to calculate it using Pythagoras and trig functions. Find it a little bit easier to do. First, we're going to take the same angles. These same angles are written here. And what we're going to do is for any two points that have west or south coordinates, we're going to change them to a negative. Next step is to change these degrees into radians. To do that, we take our degree and multiply it by pi over 180 to get radians. Here on the bottom, we have our coordinates in radians. Now that we have that, we are going to use some very special formulas to develop a Cartesian coordinate. Our Cartesian coordinate will be in x, y, z. For each point, point 1 and point 2, we'll find x through this formula, radius times cosine la uh, latitude times cosine longitude, y is our radius times cosine latitude sine longitude, and our z is our radius times our sine latitude. By doing that, for each point, we get two XYZ coordinates. Here we have point one and point two. Notice some, that some of them are negative. It will not affect the outcome and in fact makes it easier to calculate because we can use it for any coordinates all around the globe. Now, this is where Pythagoras comes into play. We're going to use these coordinates and the distance formula to find the straight line distance between two points. If you take a look at our globe here, there's a straight line from Texas to New York. Now the straight line distance will go from one point to the other, right through the globe. That's what this distance is. Reason that comes in handy, and that's just calculated 
by taking the square root of the, the difference in squaring them. The reason this comes in handy is because when we turn the globe, like I had just shown, there's the United States. If we turn it to where the great circle is actually the outline, then we get our point over here and our point over here. They're a little bit closer together, but bear with me. So here's our first point and here's our second point. We know that the radius is the same. We create this isosceles triangle. What we do is bisect it with the, a line that's perpendicular to the base. Now, what we found is that this distance is D, our straight line distance that we just calculated. And this angle is the angle difference between the two points. So, in order to calculate that, just take some easy steps, some trig functions. As we can see, we will find this angle, half of it, by using the opposite distance and the hypotenuse. And of course, there's a little bit more Pythagoras and some simple trig. We have that our distance is this, and if we were to multiply it by 2, we have that opposite value which comes out to 725.67 miles. So, in order to find that angle, take our opposite and divide it by our hypotenuse. In this case, we use the inverse, and our opposite is our distance divided by 2, and our hypotenuse is actually our radius. But since we need two of these angles, we'll multiply the whole equation by two. Now here I used the radius is equal to 3959, and when calculated, gives a radian value of 0.364543. This point, you can do one of two things. You can convert it back to degrees and use the formula we discussed in class, or you can leave it in radians and use this novel arc length formula, which is this 2 pi here, so this value goes here and you multiply it times the radius, which gives us a distance of 1,443.23. When we compare that value to a driving distance given by Google Maps, we see that there's more than 200 miles difference between the two, which comes in handy since my sister lives in New York. And if I were to fly one day, I could be there much sooner. This is another method for calculating the distance between any two points on the Earth using latitude and longitude along a great circle. Thank you very much.